Good evening and back here in San Antonio. It is election night up for grabs tonight. The mayor's seat along with all 10 city council districts. Yeah, and that's not all the highly anticipated prop a that would change the way law enforcement operates. And as always, we have the results to other races in our area in Alamo Heights, Balcones Heights, Holotus, Kirby, Leon Valley, just to name a few. So let's not waste any more time. Let's start with the big one, Prop A. On your screen right now, a list of the changes Prop A supporters ask the people of San Antonio to vote on from decriminalizing marijuana and abortion to expanding sight and release, just to name a few. Let's take a look at the results tonight. Prop A easily being defeated with 72% of the people voting against it. Yeah, and Garrett Berger has been following this Prop A battle for a while now. He joins us live. Garrett, you're at the opposition party where the mood is pretty light, I assume. Absolutely. From the word go, as early results came in, it was very clear that Prop A was going to get obliterated tonight. They started off with about 48 and a half percentage points between the opposition and supporters. So it made for a pretty easy night here on the north side. Now the Justice Charter, as supporters called it, aimed to decriminalize marijuana possession and abortion, and expand the city's site and release program, create a new justice director position, and embed bans on chokeholds and no-knock warrants in the charter. But several council members came out against it, and the city attorney said most of it wasn't even enforceable. Site and release in particular became a a focus since the change would largely mandate officers cite rather than arrest people for certain offenses, whereas they now have more discretion. Opponents in the police union and business community claimed that would lead to more crime, which struck a chord with voters. You know, and in, in, in mentioning to people, no one has a right to take your stuff, right? Uh, and I've said this before, as kids, we were taught not to lie, cheat, or steal. The, this proposition allowed some of that, and, and that's just not right for the community. The business community. Both sides accuse the other of misleading voters or misinformation, and a police union controlled PAC pumped more than $1.8 million into the race. The head of Act for SA, which led the campaign to get Proposition A onto the ballot, blamed the size of their loss on the amount of money the union and others had spent fighting it. She said she didn't regret putting all of the issues onto the same ballot proposition. And while this one went down particularly hard, she does she said she does expect to see similar initiatives sometime in the future. Live on the north side, I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Garrett. Now to the mayoral race where Mayor Ron Nuremberg wins his last term as mayor by a landslide. As you can see, the mayor there taking 61% of the vote tonight. Eight other candidates running against him. The closest one, Chris Schuchart, coming in second with 22% of the vote. The night team's Patty Santos was at Ron Nuremberg's watch party at the friendly spot where he seemed overcome with emotion at times, even teary-eyed at one point, Patty. Yeah, Mayor Ron Nuremberg says he did not take this campaign for granted. He tells us he worked really hard and he's humbled that voters decided to elect him once again for his final term. The celebration was loud here at the friendly spot in downtown, but emotions were high. Mayor Ron Nuremberg is one of the few mayors to be elected to uh, all to his term limits, making him one of the longest serving mayors in the city after Henry Cisneros. In total, he served the city 10 years, including his time as councilman, his big push has been affordable housing, fighting economic inequality and job creation. And he tells us tonight he will finish his final term. I'm going to keep working all the way to the whistle. Uh, the only plans I have is to be here uh, to hand the ball off as far down the field as I possibly can. And he was asked if he's thinking beyond the next two years and what's next for him politically. He's saying he's not going to allow himself to think about that. He's going to finish out the job that he was elected to do tonight. His focus, he says, is going to be on continuing to provide educational opportunities and job creation here in San Antonio. We're live in downtown. Patty Semples, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Patty. As we mentioned, all city council races are up tonight. Freshman District 1 City Council Member Mario Bravo facing a half dozen challengers in his first run for re-election, including a woman who was the first to announce she would seek the District 1 seat last year. And a local businessman who had the endorsement of the San Antonio Express News. So let's take a look. The race for the District 1 council spot, a tight one between three candidates. Dr. Sukkor, a newcomer, currently in the lead.
The night team's Lee Waldman is at her watch party tonight. Lee, how is that camp feeling? They're feeling hopeful. I was talking to Flora earlier, and she said she's ready for the fight that comes with a runoff election race. Now, I stopped by all three of the watch parties for those top three candidates hoping and vying for this District 1 seat, and they all said that exact same thing. Now, as you know, we're updating those election results live on KSAT.com. Looking at those numbers now, Sukor has 34% of the vote. Incumbent Mario Bravo has 26%, and Jeremy Roberts pulling up third with 21% of that vote. None of these candidates running away with the majority of the votes needed to clinch a victory tonight. I asked each of them how they're planning to approach a runoff race. I will continue to knock on doors. I will continue to talk to voters and I will continue to modify what I've been uh, wanting to propose for the city based on what voters tell me. I think it's an opportunity to uh, go back to our strong supporters and make sure that they're all showing up to volunteer, tapping into their network. We're going to have to knock a lot more doors and uh, just let people know that the election's happening. We're going to go in high, we're going to play a clean race and we're going to go and ask for a vote and we're going to be sincere. Um, one of the things that's been crazy is I've put my phone number out there and I've asked voters to call me. That runoff election race is happening on June 10th. That's according to the Bear County Election Department. Reporting live, Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. All right, Lee, thank you so much. Sounds like fun out there. Mm -hmm. Now to Jalen McKee Rodriguez, who made history when he won the District 2 seat two years ago as the first openly gay man to serve on city council. But to keep his job, he has to get past nine challengers in a district that historically has been prone to incumbents getting voted out after one term. Let's take a look at the results in District 2. Ten candidates on the ballot in District 2, but incumbent Jalen McGee Rodriguez Unfazed by that long list of challengers, the East Side Councilman avoiding a runoff after capturing 56% of the vote and holding steady as tonight's results have rolled in. Yeah, that's a big landslide. Dylan Collier is joining us live at McKee Rodriguez's watch party, and we know Dylan's supporters have had plenty to cheer about tonight since the beginning. The former school teacher taught his opponents a lesson tonight on how to remain in office on your own terms. McKee Rodriguez becomes the first council person from District 2 to win re-election in a decade. You have to go back to the days of Ivy Taylor for the last time that was done on the east side. McKee Rodriguez's support of Prop A, which da went down by a resounding margin tonight, also didn't really seem to impact his ability to get votes at the polls. I think people really underestimate the relationships that I built in, in my district. So while I, when we were knocking on doors, people said, oh, you support Prop A, but I really like you. I like the things that you've been doing and the way that you've communicated with me, but I don't think I can vibe with this one thing. And so I'll respect that. With a second term secured, McKee Rodriguez said he's hoping to serve all four terms as council person for District 2, saying the east side is in desperate need of that kind of stability. Reporting live at the Mosaic Multiplex, Dylan Collier, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Dylan. And after getting past a dozen other candidates to win her first term in office in 2021, District 3 Council member Phyllis Villagran is facing just three challengers in her bid for another term in office. The Southside District has been represented by Villagran for 10 years. Here are the results of that race. Phyllis Villagran uh, pulling in 51% of the votes, avoiding a runoff in that race. And District 4 is the first race on the ballot with just two candidates, Adriana Rocha Garcia, who is seeking her third term in office, and Marine veteran Gregorio de la Paz seeking his first. Here are the results right there on your screen. Rocha Garcia with an overwhelming win 75% to 25. Over in District 5, Council Member Terry Castillo is finishing up her first term and is looking to continue her work in City Hall. And the man who faced her in a runoff in 2021, former city employee Rudy Lopez, is back to take another shot to lead the West Side District. The results tonight show that Terry Castillo easily moves on to another term with 63% of the vote. And if the candidates in District 6 seemed familiar to you, there's a good reason. They were all on the ballot in 2021. The winner then, incumbent Melissa Cabello Haverda, who is now seeking her third term in the Far West Side District. Small business owner Irina Rudolph and economics professor Chris Baker 
standing in her way. So let's see how that race turned out right now. 54% for Melissa Cabello Haverda. A uh, close call there. Now over to District 7, where the race to replace Anna Sandoval and voters will now have to wait for a runoff election to determine who will be their next city council representative. Yeah, this race drew a field of several up and coming city leaders and activists. RJ Marquez is live at the watch party for the front runner, Marina Aldrete Gavito. Yeah, that's right, Courtney and Tim. And actually, they're watching us right now in case at 12, so you can hear some of the applause as uh, Marina Alberto Gaviro is still meeting with supporters out here at her watch party. Now, she was considered by many to be the favorite and actually held a more than 20-point percentage lead throughout the evening, but it was not enough to avoid a runoff against the second-place finisher tonight. That would be Dan Rossiter. Alderete Gaviro held her watch party right here at Lisa's restaurant on Bandera Road, thanking supporters, and that included the fire and police unions. Gavito has worked with Rackspace and USAA and is considered a rising tech and business leader. She told us she felt confident she could continue her momentum moving forward and address issues for District 7 voters. I still want to use my business acumen and community leadership experience to serve the residents, uh, really bring accountability and transparency to City Hall, use my business acumen to make sure that we're using our taxpayer dollars efficiently and effectively. That's right, and down the road, Dan Rossiter met with his supporters as well. Rossiter has worked with Southwest Research Institute for years and with the Brooks Development Authority. Now, he told us earlier tonight that this is exactly where they wanted to be and what they hope for today. So we are missing that sound right, right now from Dan Rossiter, but basically he said he wanted to focus on issues uh, going back to when he started to run this campaign in January, and he was talking about transportation issues, infrastructure, and filling the needs of voters in District 7. So back out here live at uh, Alderete Gavido's watch party, she noted that infrastructure on Bandera Road was also a key issue for her and something that she was hoping to address as well. But for now, these candidates will have to prepare for a runoff next month, but again, over Overall, the mood here pretty good. This was kind of expected with a field of about five candidates headed into tonight. Reporting live from northwest of downtown, RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. All right, thank you, RJ. Now to District 8, Manny Palaya is running for his last term in office. As you can see on the screen, clearly securing it. Uh, the Northeast Side District, he's been running since 2017, and he will get a couple more years. His challenger who stood against him was Cesario Garcia with 29% of the vote. And out in District 10, incumbent John Courage was hoping to see his final term in office. He gets it with 63% of the vote, avoiding a runoff with his challengers. And District 10, a new councilman heading there as Clayton Perry did not seek re-election. The race going in favor of Mark White. Our Erica Hernandez is joining us live from his campaign watch party tonight as those celebrations began pretty early there tonight. Erica. Yeah, Tim, so early that they've already wrapped up, but it was during when early voting numbers came out, the cheers broke out here at the barn door and on North New Braunfels Avenue. Now, Mark White arriving with his wife and young daughters greeted every supporter that was here. White ran against six others and had a lot of support and endor endorsements. Many of the past District 10 councilmen endorsing White, including current embattled councilman Clayton Perry, who in April pleaded no contest to driving while intoxicated. He also showed up tonight in support of White. White, a conservative, knows he has his work cut out for him, but had this message for his new colleagues. I know that we're not going to agree on everything. Um, that's for sure. Um, but I am ready to work with all of you on any issue um, at any time. Uh, in me, you're going to have somebody that tells you what I think, um, that fights for, for what I believe is right, uh, but that's someone that's always willing to listen to you, uh, to hear your perspective, and to try to fi find common ground. Um, now, White went on to tell me that he is ready to work for District 10 and heard their concerns. One of those, crime. He said he is working to help reduce crime and keep families safe. Live on the north side, Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News.